now we're actually ready to um, add our saving functionality. So I will go down below our function for loading. I probably should have just done that first so you could see how it was structured, but I guess we'll get around to that now. Um, in this case, we're going to do a public sub and we're going to call it save map and we're going to pass a couple of parameters. Uh, the first one is going to be the actual map itself as a map base. Uh, so whatever is being held in our game or world screen um, would in this case be saved to disk. Now in a game you're probably not going to be using a saving function much if at all. Um, can't really think of any good reason to use it unless uh, you want to sort of save a map state or something with it uh, or alter the map uh, mid-cycle. There's different things you could do there. I don't know if that's really a good idea, uh, but certainly something you could consider. Um, anyway, uh, this would work the same way uh, in a map editor or something like that. But kind of gives you at least it lets you see how it's how it's structured and how it's built. So we'll go ahead and uh, pass the map name as a string. And again, I was using that for um, uh, file naming purposes. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did on top um, using our file stream. So if you want, uh, you could actually come up here, grab that first line, come down here, and paste it. And there's only one thing that we really need to change here in this instance, and that is um, to change our file mode from open to create, because we're actually going to be writing back to a file this time. So, uh, map name map name map name dot map everything else looks good there um, do the same thing for your zip stream just to save time and in this case we are going to also flip this around to compress because we want to compress our map data to save space and finally uh, we're going to take our reader And we're going to turn that into a writer. And we're also going to have to change uh, from binary reader to binary writer. It's not going to be happy if it's uh, reading. Um, let me see, is there anything else we need to do here? I think we're good. So, now this is where you actually structure and order what needs to be read in whatever order you want up here. So, uh, in this case, we are using writer.write, and we supply the map name first. Um, I have to write this in exactly the same order as we're reading up here for our reader to work. Now we could shift these around and kind of fix some things that I messed up on <laughs> earlier, but I'm just going to leave it. Uh, another thing you might want to write to your map header, uh, maybe your tile size. So you can pass a dynamic value to um, these guys here. Uh, really, you can do anything you like. Uh, okay, writer dot write, and here we are going to write back map dot map width because we want to record the width and height of our map for when we read that back. Dot write. I am going to copy that so I don't have to keep typing it because I'm too tired tonight. <laughs> map dot map height 
And what else do we want to write here? Uh, the character start location, very important. So uh, map dot start location dot. Now remember, we have to grab each of these singles individually. Um, so we're going to use the x value for our vector two and our y value. Map dot start location dot y. So you can see here we're we've got uh, five values that we're reading: map name, width, height, start location x, start location y, in that order. And we should be uh, able to come up here and see that same order. So we can see name width, height, uh, reader x, uh, sorry, uh, start location x, start location y. Looking good. Um, what other values uh, do we need to capture? Uh, well, we're going to have to loop through the tiles that exist in that map array. So we're going to do our 4x equals 0 to map dot map width and then for y equals zero to map dot map height because I'm feeling OCD today <laughs> writer dot write okay map dot here we want to start grabbing the tile values from our tile list. Uh, map dot tile list at the x and y coordinate. Oh come on! Wow! Let me see what I did. You guys probably caught that well before me. <laughs> I need to turn my brain on here. Ah yes. I'm off my game. <laughs> so source rectangle values. Um, rectangle values can be uh, stored much the same way as the vector values. Uh, we're going to use an x and y on those. So we're going to say source rectangle dot x. And then we'll write the y value. Tile list. X, Y dot source rectangle dot Y value writer dot write. So what else do we want to capture? The is block, the is step trigger, and the trigger script, right? So map dot tile list X, Y Save some keystrokes here. Dot is blocked. And dot is step trigger. And finally, dot trigger script. Our string values. So we should be. Uh, writing the same values as we're reading up here. So we'll look at these. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five more values. Uh, source rectangle X and Y is blocked, is step trigger and trigger, trigger script. So let's come up here and double check. Um, now you see we have four here, but we've, we're actually reading twice in, in our source rectangle. So we're doing source X, um, source Y, and because we're not actually passing these values, uh, we don't have to worry about them in this instance. Um, then the is blocked, is step trigger, and the trigger script. So this looks to be identical to what we have here. Exactly what we want. Alrighty. Next step, um, after our loop completes, we want to close the writer. So we're going to say writer.close. And then we are going to go close our zip stream. 
Uh, same way as before. And finally, we are going to close our file stream f stream dot close. And if you want, um, you know, you can throw up some sort of message box saying, "Hey, we saved successfully." Um, that can get annoying really quick when you can start saving files, but that's up to you. Uh, so we don't have to return a value because in this case we're running a sub. Now this is all there is to it. You could uh, stop watching now if you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and proceed on to implementing this uh, so I can you know sort of show it to you in action. Um, there are a few other things that I need to clean up from the old routine that we were running in our world screen. Uh, we're going to have to be uh, creating an instance of our map handler class to generate a new map from a file uh, loading those values properly uh, there's some other things that are going to change probably um, you know fetching tile sources we're no longer using tile types uh, the the map file is actually going to specify these source rectangle values so we will no longer need those um, so we'll be able to just completely dump that function, but as soon as we do that, we're going to have to alter um, where those tile sources are, which isn't hard. Um, so I'm going to take a little break here, and then we will get on to uh, cleaning this up a bit and implementing that.